वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर कुमारी वंदना एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टू प्रजेंट अ मॉड्यूल अंडर द पेपर थ्री दैट इज द टॉपिक ऑफ द पेपर इज थर्मोडाइनमिक्स ऑफ लिविंग सिस्टम्स एंड बायो एनर्जेटिक्स दिस इज द मॉड्यूल नंबर नाइनटीन द इलेक्ट्रोकार्डियोग्राफी द ई सी जी इन दिस मॉड्यूल फर्स्ट वी विल स्टार्ट विद द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द मॉड्यूल इट इंक्लूड्स द इंट्रोडक्शन biophysics of generation of electrocardiographic signals which includes the normal cardiac cellular electrophysiology source sense uh, source sensing concept generation of cardiac electric fields concept of limblets augmented limblets precordial limblets and wilson central terminal so concept of volume conductor electrocardiographic instrument setting recording setting the recording system electrocardiography electrode connection and uh, importance of ecg and finally the summary of the module let us start with the introduction the beating of the human heart has fascinated the human being since long it was a constant endeavor of mankind to know more about it during the normal and pathological conditions the introduction of electrocardiography provided objective information about the heart structure and function and with further enhancement of the techniques it has become the first line of diagnostic tool it is very easy to understand and once un understood it can help to identify the diseases hiding behind the changes in ecg so in this module we will try to understand the basics of electrocardiogram the recent advances in physiology and technology have expanded the information about the heart heart's electrical activity electrocardiogram is a electrographical representation of electrical activity produced by the heart it provides time voltage graph of heart beat the device used to obtain and display the ecg is called electrocardiograph or ecg machine the ecg is a recording of cardiac electrical activity and not directed direct measure of mechanical function of the heart for example ECG may be normal in patient with acute pulmonary edema in the in a contrary a patient with a grossly abnormal ECG may have normal cardiac function so the ECG only measures the electrical changes produced by the structural de defect rather than depicting abnormalities in cardiac structure such as ventricular septal defect such as ventricular septal defect and valvular defect before we start this module on electrocardiography let us see the origin of this wonderful device where medicine meets physics uh, it was dr luigi galvani an italian physicist who discovered that electrical current can be recorded from a skeletal muscle in the year 1786 exactly after 56 years in 1842 dr carlo matteci a professor of physics at the university of pisa demonstrated that current accompanies every heartbeat in frog augustus waller a british physiologist for the first time demonstrated human electrocardiogram using a capillary electrometer it was dr william inthoven a dutch physiologist who carried forward the work of waller and was able to demonstrate five deflection which he named as a b c d e the problem with the capillary electrometer uh, was the inertia of the capillary system so dr inthoven implemented a mathematical correction to adjust for the inertia of the capillary system this resulted in curves that we see today he named the uh, uh, refined curves as pqrst following the mathematical tradition as established by descartes the term electrocardiogram used for this waveforms was con coined by dr inthoven himself it was the year 1901 when he successfully developed a new string galvanometer with a very high sensitivity it was weight 600 points as the string galvanometer was finding its use in various clinical scenarios lots of improvement were made to make it more practical the ecg recorded by waller used five electrodes but inthoven used three electrodes this resulted in the development of three leads leading to the construction of inthoven triangle for which he was awarded nobel prize in 1924 
With further development in the year 1934, Dr. Frank Wilson developed the concept of central terminal. This led to a development of unipolar limb lead. In 1942, Dr. Emanuel Goldberger developed the augmented limb leads. So it took almost a half century from original electrocardiography by Enthoven till the development of 12 lead ECG that we see today. The old string galvanometer electrocardiograph showing the big machine with the patient rinsing this extremities in a centrical electrode filled with the electrolyte solution. In the, so in this picture, old string galvanometer electrocardiograph showing the big machine with the patient rinsing his extremities in the cylindrical electrode filled it with electrolyte solution is, is shown. Now let us have a quick review of functioning and conducting system of the heart. The heart is divided into two atria and the two ventricles. The upper chambers of heart, the atria receive the blood from the systemic and pulmonary circulation respectively. The right and left ventricle contract together to propel the blood into the lungs, pulmonary circulation and the body that is systemic circulation respectively. The process of contraction is initiated and maintained by the electrical forces of the heart. This electrical, the electrical impulse is generated by the heart which is spread through the surrounding tissue to the surface of the body as represented in the ECG. Three types of heart cells are involved in the process of electrical impulse, formation, conduction and mechanical contraction. They are the pacemaker, they, they are the pacemaker cells that are responsible for initiation of electrical impulses. Normally electrical impulses originate in the pacemaker cell in the sinoatrial node. However, other pacemakers are located throughout the heart. The second type of cell is a specialized conducting cell which are responsible for conduction of electrical impulses. The conducting system is comprised of SA node, the atroventricle node, atrial intermodal pathway, bundle of S right and left, bundle branches and Purkinje fiber. The third type of cell is the muscle cells which performs the function of electrical conduction and mechanical contraction which make maximum part of mass of uh, which make maximum part of mass of atria and ventricles. Now the uh, tra impulse transmitted by the pacemaker cells and the specialized conducting cells are too rapid to be recorded in the ECG. It is important to note that the surface ECG record electrical activity from only the muscle cell. The heartbeat is produced by mechanical contraction caused by the stimulation of these muscle cells. The initiation of cardiac contraction by electrical stimulation is called electromechanical coupling. The impulse travels from the sinoatrial node then to the AV node from there it reaches the bundle of S and then to the bundle branches and finally to the Purkinje fiber. Now, the, uh, now we will talk about the normal cardiac cellular electrophysiology. All the living cells are made of um, all living cells are made of membrane and have different ions distributed across it. This distribution gives a resting membrane potential. The resting membrane, the resting membrane potential is negative inside related to the outside of the cell. The cell have various ions, but the imp most important ones contributing to the resting membrane potential are sodium, potassium, calcium and chloride. The concentration of potassium inside the cell is higher than the outside. In contrast, sodium, calcium and chloride ions are in higher concentration outside. The higher concentration of potassium inside the cell related to outside, it is a 150 millimole inside and 4 millimole outside, creates a concentration gradient for outward diffusion. As the membrane is permeable to potassium, which is positively charged, creates a negative potential inside. The concentration gradient determines the net outward flow of the potassium ion. Now if the concentration outside the cell is increased, then the chemical gradient driving the outward diffusion will reduce. It will lead to decreased movement of potassium outside and thus leading to a less negative membrane potential that is depolarization. In a table, it is shown that the concentration of primary ions involved in the cardiac physiology.
the normal resting myocardial cells in the atria and the ventricles are polarized that is they carry electrical charges on their surface the outer surface of the cell membrane of resting cell is positively charged where the neg- inside is negatively charged with the gradient between the two surfaces is about 90 millivolt and the ionic fluxes across cell membranes of individual cell and adjacent cell which leads to generation of transmembrane current each cardiac cycle consists of two electrical process depolarization and repolarization due to the depolarization the positive electrical charges on the surface of the myocardial cells change to negative charges this transmembrane current is synchronized by cardiac activation and recovery sequences which is responsible for generation of a cardiac electrical field in and around heart uh, this uh, the electrical field crosses various structure and it reaches the skin where it is detected by electrodes placed at specific location on the extremities the p wave is produced by electrical potential generated by depolarization of right and left atria before atrial contraction begin the qrs complex is caused by the potential generated when the right and the left ventricle depolarize before contraction that is as the polarization wave spreads through the ventricles therefore the depolarization waves includes both the p wave and the components of qrs complex the t wave is a repolarization wave caused by potential generated when both the ventricle recovers from the state of depolarization it normally occurs in ventricular muscle and it Uh, it uh, it normally occurs in ventricular muscle 0.25 to 0.35 seconds after depolarization the beginning of the st segment is termed as j point now the pq and uh, the pr segment corresponds to the duration of atrioventricular conduction the qrs complex is produced by the stimulation of the two ventricles and the st t wave reflects ventricular recovery the figure one shows the ecg of a healthy individual now we are going to talk about the source and the sink concept when an action potential propagates through the muscle the depolarization causes shift in polarity in the figure two we can see that when a cardiac fiber is stimulated from the point a the wave of depolarization propagates in the forward direction the transmembrane potential will tend to become more positive and the fiber from point b to a will become negative due to repolarization and from point b to c the transmembrane potential will become positive and thus the cycle continues let us see in the figure once more a sink at the site of the peak inward current flow and a source at the site of peak outward current flow separated by the distance d the vector of the dipole produced by the sourcing pair is represented by the arrow the figure 2 help us to understand this concept better the figure 2 help us to understand the concept better now we are going to talk about the generation of uh, cardiac electrical fields transmembrane iron ionic currents are ultimately responsible for the generation of the potentials which is in turn read as ecg to understand this concept let us have a look in figure 2 and again recap what we have learned earlier when an action potential propagates through the muscle the depolarization the depolarization causes shift in polarity the transmembrane ionic currents are ultimately responsible for the generation of the potentials which is in turn read as ecg to understand this concept let us have a look in figure 2 and again recap what we have learned when an action potential propagates through the muscle the depolarization causes shift in polarity in the figure 2 we can see that when a cardiac fiber is stimulated from the point a the wave of depolarization propagates in the forward direction the transmembrane potential is positive till the point b but as the action potential reaches the point b the transmembrane fiber ahead of the point is negative because there is no depolarization in that segment still 
but once the axon potential propagation further the transmembrane potential will tend to become positive and the fiber from point B to A will become negative. Due to de repolarization and from point B to C the transmembrane potential will become positive and thus the cycle continues. The transmembrane ionic current are responsible for potential which is recorded in ECG. Now we are going to talk about the concept of limb leads. For recording the ECG, metallic leads attached to the wires are placed on the skin, adhered with the electrolyte paste and electronic recording circuit are arranged in such a way to look at the cardiac vector from different vantage points. For performing uh, clinical ECG, 12 leads Three standard uh, for performing uh, clinical ECG, 12 leads, which includes three standard limb leads, six precordial leads, and the three augmented leads are used. The 12 leads are commonly divided into subgroups corresponding to the cardiac region to which they are thought to be most sensitive. The precordial leads record the potential at each designated torso sites in relation to the reference potential. A various definition of these groupings are available. For example, anterior lead groups have been defined as including V2 through V4 or only V2 and V3 and lateral uh, or anterobasal to lead 1 and AVL. These designations are non specific and are, they are not recommendation to use them in ECG interpretation except in the case of localization of myocardial infarction. The six limbs record the voltage differences by means of electrodes placed on the extremities. They can be divided into two subgroups based on their historical development. The three standard bipolar leads that include first, second and third and three augmented unipolar limb leads that are AVR, AVL and AVF. First we are going to talk about the standard uh, limb leads. The lead one, it represents potential difference between left arm that is positive electrode and the right arm that is a negative electrode. The limb two, it represents potential difference between the left leg that is a positive electrode and the right arm as a negative electrode. The, limb, uh, the lead 3 represents a potential difference between the left leg and the left arm. Uh, these three leads are connected in such a way that they form a equilateral triangle surrounding the heart in the frontal plane at the body surface. This is called the Enthoven triangle. The Enthoven law or equation states that the potential in lead 2 is equal to the, the sum of potential in the limb first and the second that is 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. In figure 3, the Enthoven triangle is represented in panel A and in panel B, the three lead axes are rearranged to cross the central point. In panel C, a QRS vector is drawn together with its projection on the standard limb lead for second and third. Now we are going to talk about the augmented limb leads. The exploding electrode forms a positive input as right arm electrode, the left arm electrode, left leg electrode for AVR, AVL and AVF respectively. The reference potential for the augmented lead is formed by connecting two limb electrodes other than the exploding electrode. So the augmented lead AVR is it represent the equation that is RA minus it, uh, AVR is equal to right arm minus left arm plus lower limb divided by 2. The AVR is equal to left arm minus right arm plus lower limb divided by 2 and the AVF is equal to lower limb minus right arm plus left arm divided by 2. AVF uh, is, includes the left leg and the left arm plus right arm. Now we are going to talk about the precordial leads and the Wilson central terminal. The precordial leads records the potential at each of the six sites in relation to a reference potential. The accomplished disc and exploring electrode is placed on each precordial site and connected to the positive input of the recording system. The negative input is the mean value of the potential recorded at each of the three limb electrodes referred to as Wilson central terminal. The potential in each V in each V lead can be expressed as VI is equal to EI minus WCT, where WCT is equal to LA plus uh, LL plus RA divided by 
um, uh, reversity is equal to left arm plus lower limb plus right arm divided by 3 and VI is, is the potential recorded in precordial lead I. EI is a vo voltage sense at the ele uh, exploring electrode. The potential in each uh, V lead can be expressed as VI is equals to EI minus WCT where WCT is is equals to left arm plus lower leg uh, lower leg plus our right arm divided by 3 and vi is the potential recorded in the precordial lead i ei is the voltage sensed as at the exploring electrode for vi and vi is the potential recorded in the precordial lead i EI is the voltage sensed at the exploring electrode for the lead VI and WCT is a potential in the composite Wilson central terminal. Thus, the potential in the Wilson central terminal is the average of the potential in the three limb leads. The potential recorded by the Wilson central terminal remains relatively constant during the cardiac cycle so that the output of the precordial lead is determined predominantly by time dependent changes in the potential at the precordial site. The waveform recorded by these leads preferentially reflects potential generated in cardiac region near the electrode. The little contribution from more distant cardiac sources in the figure 4, 6 precordial lead sites are, are shown. V1 is placed at the 4th intercostal space at the right sternal border. The V2 lead is placed at the 4th intercostal space at the left sternal border. And the V3 is placed between the V2 and the V4. V4 is placed at the mid clavicular line at the 5th intercostal space. It is at the apex. It, it, um, the V4 is at place at the mid clavicular line in the fifth intercostal space where the apex weight is felt. The V5 is placed at the left anterior axillary line at the same level as for V4. And the V6 lead is placed at the left, at the left mid axillary line at the same level as V4 and the V5. Now we are going to talk about the concept of volume conductor. The biological tissues separating the sources and recording electrodes are called the volume conductor. It plays a vital role in acquisition of signals. The Gen generated action potential creates an electrical field in the surrounding space. Thus, the potential generated can also be detected at distant location. The potential signal have to transfer through various media so as to reach the recording electrodes. Now we are going to talk about electrocardiography instrument settings. First is the recording setting. This information is very crucial in biomedical research because the appropriate setting of the instrument will not only give a proper signal but also helps in diagnosis of a disease. The two major challenges associated with ECG recording are first is the amplification. The biological signals are very weak in nature, so they need a proper amplifier for adequate amplification by the recording device. It brings the amplified signal to an amp appropriate range for display and analysis. Second is the filter. The main purpose is to remove any, any noise and it determines the frequency range to be maximally amplified. A wrong filter selection may lead to the distortion and sometimes even disappearance of the signals. The interested range for ECG signal is 0.05 to 150 Hz that is diagnostic and 0.5 to 40 Hz that is for monitoring. So a band pass filter must be applied for the proper acquisition of signals. Now we are going to talk about the, in the recording system, the electrocardiograph. Electrocardiographic machine is an amplifier instrument. With this, the action current of the heart transmitted to the electrode is amplified and recorded on a moving paper. Thus, observe the cooperation of following components. The calibration knob. In order to compare electrocardiographic records properly, it is necessary that a certain deflection in height always correspond to a certain electrical potential of human heart. For this reason and because of the height of the waves in the cardiogram plays an important role in interpretation. One millivolt causes a deflection of 10 millimeters in the record. 
first second is a centering device the centering device controls the position of the baseline of the electrocardiogram the centering device the centering device controls the position of the baseline of the electrocardiogram for the standardization uh, for the standard uh, standardization for the standardization of most tracing the central line of the record should be kept near the center of the paper third is the lead selector the lead selector is marked for various leads the instrument offers the possibility of selecting up to 12 leads without changing the electrode wires the lead selector switch connects the patient lead wires to the amplifier of the instrument in such a combination as are necessary to record various bipolar and unipolar leads fourth is a speed selector routine electrocardiograms are taken at a paper speed of 25 mm per second the instrument also provides a second speed of 50 mm per second the use of which facilitates the measurement of timing interval in the tracing and is especially valuable while recording electrocardiograms of on patient with very rapid heart rates now the cables and the electrodes the power cord connects the instrument with the electrical line the patient cable is divided into five electrode wires marked with the letter <clears throat> the right ra for the right arm la for the left arm rl for the left right leg ll for the left leg and c for the chest the four limb electrodes and the one chest electrode is provided with the machine the limb electrode or plate electrode and the chest electrode is of suction types velcro straps fasten the limb electrode to the patient and the electrode jelly is used to reduce the skin resistance a ground wire is used from the machine to eliminate the interference with 50 cycles now the electrocardiographic paper the the graph paper it is used in the electrocardiography is thermosensitive the lines on the paper form squares 1 mm high and 1 mm long at the paper speed of 25 mm per second each mm of the horizontal line represent 0.04 seconds in time the heavier lines after each fifth square represent 0.2 seconds and the five larger squares are equals to 1 second now we will talk about the stylus and the stylus is made up of stainless steel when the heat is when heated it writes on a heat sensitive paper a temperature switch regulates the heat of the stylus now we are going to talk about electrocardiographic electrode connections the electrodes are attached to all four limbs for ekg recordings a fifth electrode which is movable records from the various chest areas a disc need uh, disc needles or ekg limb electrodes may be used for the limb use conductive ekg jelly for fixing surface electrodes this will ensure low resistance contact that is 100 ohms or less the the electrode must be mechanically secure to ensure artifact free recording the needle and the disc electrode should be fixed with the adhesive tape whereas the perforated rubber strap should be used for ekg limb electrodes and um, check the resistance of the electrode contacts reply those with the resistance in excess of 10000 ohms connect the electrode to the appropriate terminal of the junction box provided at the end of the input cable use terminal ra for right arm and ll for left leg etc now the lead selectors the lead selector can be used to select the standard ekg leads the electrodes attached to the right leg is grounded to the input cable as such is not used as the as a recording electrode set the lead electrode set the lead selector on 
first uh, standard limb uh, leads, augmented unipolar limb leads, precordial leads. For the latter, connect the chest electrode and place it in succession over the six standard position. Leave the limb lead connected. To avoid subsequent confusion, label each lead as it is recorded. At the end, first check the calibration recorded earlier, that is the standardized 1 millivolt signal produced with deflection of 1 centimeter. Note any uh, artifact present, oscillation due to contraction of skeletal muscle and interfering extraneous voltage are the most common artifact. Third, the, determine the fundamental ventricular rhythm or rate and the relationship between atrial and ventricular rhythm. The ECG graph paper has a small square boxes that are of 5 millimeter by 5 millimeter and represent 0 0.04 seconds in time horizontally and 0.1 millivolt in voltage vertically. There are three common methods for calculating the heart rate which includes the RR method, the 6 second method and the 1500 method. The important control on the electrocardiograph includes um, speed, gain, artifact filter, LCD display, heart rate limits, standardization and the lead selectors. Artifacts are the unwanted marks on the ECG tracing caused by the activity other than the heart's electrical activity. Now the, we are going to talk about the concept of noise in ECG. In, electro, in electronics, a noise is an unwanted disturbance in an electrical signals. It varies greatly in electronic devices as it is produced by several different effects. To reduce noise, it is important to apply filters. The main functions of filters are to remove the unwanted signals and give a biologically important signals. The most common noise in ECG signals are the muscles movement. A time and speed in the ECG. Change in the electrical activity of the heart is recorded in the ECG machine by drawing a trace on a moving strip of paper strip. Each large square is of 5 mm which represents 0.2 seconds or 200 milliseconds. There are 5 large squares per second and 300 per minute. Now we, uh, it is important to know what is the significance of the ECG? The ECG is one of the most versatile and inexpensive among clinical tests. Its significance is derived from careful clinical and experimental studies over as follows. It is the essential initial clinical test for diagnosis of cardiac electrical disturbance related to the conduction abnormalities in the AV junction and the bundle branch system. Arrhythmia, there is Bradi and tachyarrhythmias, mechanical and the metabolic problem, not just about the primary abnormalities of the electrical functions. The examples include the myocardial ischemia or infarction, electrolyte disorders and drug toxicity, as well as hypertrophy and other types of chamber overload in heart. It may provide clues that allows you to detect preventable catastrophes, example sudden cardiac arrest due to torsade depointes. Now we are going to summarize the whole module. The heart has electrical and mechanical act activity. The electrical activity precedes the mechanical activity. The electrical impulses are generated by the SA node from where it passes down to the entire heart musculature by conducting pathways. These impulses generate a wave of depolarization and repolarization. During depolarization, the positive electrical charges on the surface of myocardial cells changes to negative charges. This Transmembrane current is synchronized by cardiac activation and recovery sequences which is responsible for generation of a cardiac electrical field in and around heart. 
the electrical field crosses various structures and reaches the skin where it, it is detected by the electrodes placed at specific location on the extremities with the ad advancement nowadays we are using dual lead ecg system the faint signals are picked up from the heart amplified and made noise free by using band pass filters the use of filters gives a proper acquired signal which are easy to analyze and interpret the ecg machine should be calibrated before the recording the typical ecg signal consist of p wave qrs complex and t wave in various pathological states the electrical activity of the heart changes which forms the front line of diagnosis in medical field thank you